They are crafting the right narrative about your legacy as, a, as, as the fourth citizen of this country, as a man that has realized that we can change the narrative. The inauguration of this edifice, our renovated media center, is a testament to the right honorable speakers and indeed the house commitment to the well-being and the importance of a free press in our democracy. And we are deeply and grateful for your generosity and vision. This modernized facility, as we're seeing today, is a beacon of hope for our profession, enabling us to discharge our duties more effectively. Your support is a reminder that a free press and a functioning democracy go hand in hand. Mr. Speaker, please accept our heartfelt appreciation for your unwavering support to the press corps. May this gesture inspire others, I mean future leaders, to emulate and lead by example. We cried to you, and today we are all happy, seated in this facility. You recall that before now, this hall, in fact, the press center was doing like this, was doing like this. But now the center is not doing like this anymore, and we are all smiling. We pledge to utilize this facility to promote truth, accountability, and the public interest. Thank you for your continued support and encourage Mr. Speaker, the talk and do speaker, and um, to the deputy speaker as well, who started this journey with us, with us, we say a big thank you. However, additional working materials are needed to ensure that we carry out our functions very well. We are going digital. We went for um, House Committee and Senate Committee on uh, media stakeholders on digitalization, e-governance and the digital economy. So the press corps needs to go digital. And trust me, because we know what the speaker can do. He said and he did. And we know that he will do and complete it. That laptops will all be completed here. That before the end of the 10th National Assembly, particularly the House, when you say 10th House, the first thing you remember is right on reputage in a bus, PhD. Mr. Speaker, if this is done, I tell you, journalists will not forget you. Particularly working materials to work with. Enabling environment is one thing. Another thing is that laptop, that working materials to work with. And there's nothing like people not forgetting you in a jiffy. We will not forget you in a jiffy, but with this writing material, I tell you, we are good and fine. And the memories of the 10th house, under the leadership of Right Honorable Tadudin Abbas, will never be forgotten in the jiffy. If those in support, those again say nay. In June 2022, you renewed the trust, allowing me to continue our journey together. And today marks the end of this significant chapter in our shared history and the beginning of an exciting new era. Before my election in 2020, I had the privilege 
of completing the tenure of my former chairman. Thank God he's here. My former chairman, Omar Puma. You attest to the fact that we are now going digital. Thank you very much. This opportunity not only prepared me for the role, but also made me the longest serving chairman of our esteemed press corps. And this extended period of service has given me a deep understanding of our mission, our challenges, and the remarkable potential we hold as a united body. Over these years, our journey has been marked by a series of notable achievements. Together, we have made significant strides in improving the welfare of our members, ensuring that the dignity and respect owed to each journalist in our core are upheld. And in my four years or as the chairman, together with my ESCO, we have worked tirelessly to promote the values of transparency, accountability, and fairness in our reporting. We have strived to be the voice of the voiceless, to hold those in power accountable, and to shed light on the stories that need to be told. Our retreats have fostered a sense of unity and provided a space for reflection and growth. And we must say thank you to the speaker. However, there are others that are left undone. Retreat and training. The speaker had promised that we we're going to go to Kaduna for retreat. And we are looking forward to that. We also need, we also need our bus for logistics. We need to go for oversight function. We don't have buses to go for oversight function. So if we must carry out undercover reporting, undercover investigative reporting, we need buses for logistics. And that we know that the speaker had made that promise and we know that he would definitely see to it before the end of the year. In fact, before the end of, even when they come back for the long recess, we are looking forward to that becoming a reality. As I prepare to hand over the baton of new leadership, I'm filled with hope and optimism for the future. The recent peaceful election that ushered in this new leadership demonstrated the unity and shared vision that binds us all. And to the incoming leadership, my expectations are simple yet profound. Continue to prioritize the effort of our members, ensuring that they are supported and valued. Expand training programs provide opportunities for continuous learning and professional development. I urge you to remain steadfast in your pursuit of truth and excellence. I want the new ESCO led by the incoming chairman to know that effective principal leadership requires a combination of skills, traits, and practices. First, you have to be visionary. Set clear goals and objectives and work towards achieving them and endeavor to make informed, timely, and decisive decisions. Secondly, you have to foster open and transparent communication with the leadership and also ensure that you meet your demand. Just uh, for want of time, I was, as we stand to the, on the threshold of this new beginning, let us remember that our strength lies in our unity, our commitment to truth, and our unswerving dedication to the principles of journalism. Let us continue to try for excellence, to uphold the highest standards of integrity, and to be the voice of the people. Reflecting on the past years, I'm remembered of the, reminded of the challenges we faced and the victories we celebrated. Each step, each achievement has been a collective effort. The support and trust we have shared and have been the, have been the, de the bedrock of our success. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as the chairman and I'm confident that our future is bright with promises and potential. Right on the booth speaker, I wish to once again thank you for creating our time out of your tax schedule to make this dual important function. That's the inauguration of this edifice and also the swearing in ceremony. Let me use this medium to say thank you to the male folks in the house. Without your support, I will not be where I am today. I sincerely want to say a big thank you. And to the elders in the house, please continue to play your adversary roles. Without you, I don't think the core will be where we are today. Your advice is needed and we'll continue to seek them whenever it is necessary. And to my women, funny enough, they say if a woman wants to succeed, if women are not behind you, you're on your own. To my women, we are not much. Some of you who have supported me with the little way you can, I don't think my speech will be complete without mentioning you. I have the likes of Madam Jokia de South TVC. Thank you very much. I have the likes of Lois Jonathan, Hereta Momodu, Rosemary Ochigo, Shade Omonisaye, Lucy Ladidi, Kari Ikiba, Juliet Akoji, Tomilola Yemi, 
or Dumade Margaret Ogotokwasi Nyeka Favor Eguta Christiana Ekba Lizzie Chippy Aniete Patrick Mercy Aikoye Adaona. Thank you very much, Gift Chapi. Thank you very much for supporting me all through my tenure. I came, I saw, and I conquered. Thank you very much. It is not only in times of crisis that we should remember the press corps, Mr. Chairman. On oversight visits, uh, it is not good enough for them to always then fall back on consultants in other places. Let them make use of the press corps to follow them on oversight visits. Very important. Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, as you might be aware, there was a member of the Senate press corps that passed on in the line of duty because of health issues. Mr. Speaker, I know the pressure that they are under to file stories and to accurately report the House. Mr. Speaker, I think it is very necessary that we have health insurance coverage for every member of the press corps. And I believe, sir, that this is something that you can do. Mr. Speaker, it's not something that costs a lot. With 40, 50,000, they can have full coverage for their families with, uh, with uh, themselves and families of up to six people. Mr. Speaker, this is something that I'll be taking up with you. And last but not the least, Mr. Speaker, uh, we trust that you would extend through us as well the same level of support that you have given to the house. Everything that you have seen me do, it is not of my strength, it's by the grace of God and through the instrumentality of the Right Honorable Speaker, a man that I'm proud to call my leader and my father. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please can you rise to your feet? So, thank you very much. Thank you. The role of the media within a democracy cannot be overstated. As the fourth estate, the media plays a pivotal role in fostering public engagement and upholding democratic values. The cooperation and collaboration between the media and the legislature, as outlined in our legislative agenda, are essential for promoting transparency, accountability, and effective governance. By working together, we can ensure that the public remains well informed are actively engaged in the democratic process. A well-resourced press center within the parliament is crucial for enabling the media to perform the duties effectively. This renovated press center is yet another evidence of our commit commitment to provide you with a conducive working environment. I encourage you to make full use of this facility to enhance your reporting and facilitate meaningful dialogue between the legislature and the public. I commend the press corps for your dedicated reporting on the activities of the parliament. Your efforts to keep the public informed about our work are invaluable. It is essential that your report remains well researched and balanced, providing accurate and fair coverage of our proceedings.